I'm Chef Selena from the Sylvia Center, a nonprofit organization that specializes in hands-on cooking and nutrition experience for youth in Columbia County, New York, and New York City. Today, we're gonna to have a tribute to our mothers for Mother's Day. And I'm gonna be making a recipe from my mom called cavatelli and broccoli. Now, it's an extra special Mother's Day for my mom this year because it's her last Mother's Day as a mom because soon she's gonna be nonna or how we say grandmother in Italian. And this recipe is one that both my nonna and my mom make. But when they make it, they call it cavatelli and broccoli. So I'm probably going to get in trouble for pronouncing it as cavatelli, but my grandmother is known for mispronouncing things. So I'm going to go ahead and say cavatelli because that's what it said when I looked it up. So cavatelli are uh, pasta from, it, from Southern Italy and they're, um, they're made from durum semolina flour, which has a nice high protein content, giving the pasta its structure, also water and salt. But more modern cavatelli are actually made with ricotta and eggs as well. And they're known for their elongated shape and it almost looks like a hot dog because what you do is you press your fingers in to make the shape of the pasta. So today for this recipe, what we're gonna need are one pound of frozen cavatelli. I do have the ricotta kind because that's what they had at my store, but if it doesn't have ricotta, that's totally fine too. The ricotta just makes it a little light and fluffy. Um, you're also going to need a pound of broccoli, three to five cloves of garlic. I have really big cloves today, so I'm only using three. Some Parmesan or uh, Lacatelli Romano cheese, whichever one you prefer. I'm a Parmesan fan. My mom likes the Pecorino Romano, so it's really up to you. Two tablespoons of butter one and a half cups of broth, whatever you have on hand, vegetable, chicken. And that's it, really simple. And then to make the recipe, you're gonna need a cutting board and a chef knife, a large saute pan, a slotted spoon, a wooden spoon, which I'm gonna set aside. And then a large pot of water that you should have coming to a boil. So I already have my water starting to boil, and the first thing I'm going to do is get all my vegetables and everything prepped. So I actually already minced some of my garlic, and if you're not familiar with mincing, it means to cut into really small pieces. So I'm going to show you how to do that with this one. So I'm going to cut the base off my garlic, and I'm going to hold my fingers like this. This is what we call bear claw. If you watched any of the rest of our videos, you're totally familiar with this by now. So I cut the bottom off and that's gonna help make it easier to peel. The other trick you can do is use the bottom of your hand the, or the uh, heel of your hand to press into the garlic slightly. And this is gonna help loosen the peel. So now I can get my peel off nice and easy. And now I'm gonna use what we call tunnel. So when you hold your fingers like this, like a tunnel, and I'm gonna slice down some slits into the garlic. And then I'm gonna use my knife this way, um, horizontally, and cut some more slits into the garlic. So first slits vertically and then horizontally. And now holding the garlic with my bear claw, I'm gonna cut down. And this is gonna make small pieces but I want them even smaller. So I'm going to mince this. So what you do to mince is you hold the top of your knife down on your cutting board, and then you rock the back of your knife back and forth. And this is gonna chop the garlic into really small pieces. And I'm gonna get this all in a nice little pile on my board. And I'm going to add it to the rest of my garlic. By the way, before I started today, I sanitized my countertop with a solution of bleach and water, and I washed my hands for 20 seconds with antibacterial soap and hot water. So we are all good to go. So next, I'm going to show you how to cut the broccoli. So I have my broccoli here. 
Um, so I used about two crowns, um, but if you can find a big head, you can also use that as well. You're not gonna want the, the big hardy stem for this, so you can actually go ahead and save that for vegetable stock, which is what I'm gonna do with the very bottom piece of my broccoli here. So I'm gonna cut that off. And like I said, I'm gonna set that aside for vegetable stock. And then I like some of this delicate stem because I think it adds a nice crunch to this dish. So I'm just gonna cut these into small pieces. I'm gonna hold the broccoli first using my bear claw and cut them pretty small so that that way they cook really fast. And then for the florets, I'm gonna use my tunnel and I'm gonna cut the broccoli into bite-sized pieces. And as I finish cutting, I'm gonna use my hands and pick them up and put them in my bowl. So that way my cutting board is always clear. When you have a messy cutting board, it can actually make you more dangerous because you don't have a lot of room to maneuver your knife. So always keep your cutting board nice and clear. So I'll show you again. So I'm gonna do some small pieces with the delicate stem and then use my tunnel to cut the florets into bite-sized pieces. And then put my knife down in the off position at the top of my board and pick up and put it in there with my hands. So I'm gonna cut the rest of this broccoli up real quick. broccoli is all cut up. My water is almost to a boil, so I'm going to head over to the stove. So I'm at my stove and I turned my big saute pan on and my water is now at a rolling boil. So that means that there's lots of big bubbles. So I'm going to take the lid off and keep it to the side because I might need that again. And I'm going to add a generous amount of salt to my water. That might look like a lot, but Salt's really important in making pasta because it actually helps to increase the boiling temperature and um, flavor the pasta. So you want it to kind of taste like the, like the sea. I have heard from actually a man from Italy. Sorry about that, my dog just wanted to say hi. So now my water is um, back to a boil. I'm gonna add my broccoli in. And what I'm gonna do is something called blanching. That is when you cook um, broccoli or any vegetable for just a few minutes until it becomes really bright in color. And then what you can do is shock it, which is actually putting um, it in cold or ice water to stop the cooking process. There's another video about blanching and shocking vegetables on our website that you should check out if you're interested. So I'm gonna keep my broccoli in there for just about one to two minutes. And in the meantime, I'm gonna add olive oil to my pan. About two to four tablespoons. You want a generous amount because this is gonna help make the sauce. And then I'm gonna add my minced garlic. So I'm gonna saute this just until the garlic is fragrant. fragrant. So it's only gonna take just a few moments. I can already smell that garlic. And I can also see how beautiful and bright green my broccoli is. Show you a piece. See, it's super green. So I'm gonna use my slotted spoon now and take my broccoli out and add it right to this pan right here. So now my broccoli's out and in the pan, and I added my lid back to my pot so it can come back to a boil for the pasta. So I'm gonna cook this broccoli um, and garlic on medium heat, and I'm gonna add in my broth. And so this is what's gonna make the, the sauce. So this is one and a half cups of broth. And now I'm gonna reduce this to low because I don't want this to be done before my pasta is done. So now I'm just gonna let this cook at low. I'm gonna season it with some salt and pepper, big, nice, generous seasoning of kosher salt and some black pepper. You could also throw a little 
crushed with chili flakes in here if you like spice. It'd be delicious. So I'm gonna let this cook until the broccoli is tender. So that's gonna be only about two to three minutes. So I cooked my pasta just shy of al dente according to the directions on the package and my broccoli is tender. I tasted it for seasoning and it tastes delicious. So I'm gonna add in my butter first, two tablespoons. And let that melt right in. If you don't have enough sauce, another thing you can do is save a little bit of the pasta water and the starches in the pasta water will help create a really nice sauce. So I like to do that sometimes, but this in this situation, I had plenty of sauce and the pasta is gonna just soak that right in. So I added my butter. And now I'm gonna toss my cooked pasta right in here. And with my pasta, I'm gonna add in some Parmesan cheese. And do this to your liking. I like a lot of cheese, so I'm gonna use about a half a cup. And I like to mix this in while the pasta and the broccoli is still cooking, because then it really adds to the sauce. And then we'll put a little extra cheese on top too, because who doesn't love cheese? So I'm gonna mix this all together. I'm gonna let this cook one to two minutes until the sauce starts to really absorb into that pasta. So this has been cooking for about another one to two minutes and you can really see that the sauce is still in the pan but has thickened up quite a bit from the starch in the pasta. So now I'm going to bring this over to my countertop and I'll meet you there. So I have my pasta and broccoli and it looks delicious. I'm going to taste it for seasoning. It's going to be really hot. It's delicious, just like my mama used to make. The pasta is soft and delicate, but not overcooked because I took it out just shy of al dente. That broccoli still has some bite to it, and the garlic just adds a real nice depth of flavor to this. So I'm gonna serve it here in my favorite pasta dish. I'm gonna top with just a little bit more Parmesan cheese. And there you have it. My mom's cavatelli and broccoli. So for more videos about our moms, please visit www.sylviacenter.org. You can also find this recipe there and more recipes and cooking videos like it. And don't forget to like and share this video. Happy Mother's Day to my mama and my grandmothers and all the moms out there. We'll be thinking of you. See you soon.